In on the macros then, talk a little bit about dollar being at a 25-year high. What does that mean for uh, the Asian equity markets, India in particular, and worries about global recession? Rupal Agarwal is the director, Asia Quant Strategist at Bernstein, and now joins us on the show. Thank you so much for taking time out. Just going through your uh, report at hand, and it's indicating that you know a strong dollar is never good news for the Asian markets. It tends to increase the cost of foreign debt and results in higher capital outflows, as well as putting pressure on the central bank. Given the way that we've seen the dollar at that 25-year high, what about risks to global recession? Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, so um, I do think that, you know, dollar being at 25-year uh, high does create a lot of pressure for uh, emerging markets as, as well as Asian markets. And we've already started seeing a lot of capital outflow from, uh, you know, the region. Um, I think it, of course, does uh, link to the fact that, uh, you know, we are in that very aggressive Fed hiking cycle. Uh, which uh, we saw back last in 1999. That was the last time that we saw dollar at a similar range, uh, and it did result, uh, you know, in a recession. So the likelihood of a recession clearly has uh, increased, and that, uh, you know, further increases, I would say, the risk overall to Asian in investors, um, more particularly for certain markets and certain sectors. Now, given the fact that between the years 1992 to 2002, when the Fed went ahead and increased interest rates, we saw the dot-com burst and that was followed by the recession. Some sort of a similar sequence you see repeating itself? Uh, quite likely, uh, because as I said, you know, dollar increasing is never good news for Asian markets. Uh, we've started seeing that pressure through capital outflows. We've started seeing that pressure through central banks having to align their policy with the Fed, uh, along with, uh, you know, a lot of reserve ratios being uh, completely reduced. Uh, so it is definitely creating pressures. Uh, and the fact that, uh, you know, Fed is quite resolved to bring down inflation, uh, which means that, you know, we are in for uh, a much longer Fed hiking cycle. And that means that, uh, you know, there is a likelihood of, uh, you know, recession uh, coming through because, it becomes very difficult for them to bring down inflation until and unless the demand slows down. Um, so it seems very similar to you know the time period when we last saw a similar setup of uh, rising dollar uh, along with uh, you know a hiking cycle. Uh, the construct of the dollar index is that it gets a very large weightage from euro, and Europe is going through extraordinary recessionary condition, which may not be applicable to the other parts of the world. So will it be a fair assumption to compare dollar index, the current index, with the previous instances? I mean, that's a fair point. Uh, so I think it's more about, uh, you know, even in, you know, across Asian markets, if you look at it, there are certain currencies which have relative to the dollar weakened, but not necessarily relative to some of the other uh, currencies. So I think that's an interesting dynamic which is playing out. Europe clearly is in a, in I would say, more uh, worse situation than some of the other regions, uh, given you know everything that is happening from an energy crisis perspective as well. Uh, so there is you know that angle of whether it's comparable, but uh, you know that then can be argued across different things, right? So it's not just the dollar. Uh, even if you look at from a market perspective, uh, most of the indices have changed over the last 20, 25 years. So, uh, but as quants, we always, uh, you know, refer to the, these historical trends uh, and try to, you know, get some insights out of what played out the last time we were in a very similar macro setup. What dynamics could be at play for the U.S. Fed balance sheet when interest rates they go higher because they are the ones who will have to service a large debt? And somewhere while Fed is committing to fight inflation, when will they get worried about the challenge to service their own debt if interest rates they continue to go higher? I mean, see, it's very difficult to pinpoint in terms of when they start getting worried. I think from a Fed standpoint, uh, you know, it's always been more, uh, you know, communicating much better to the market. And I think they've uh, reasonably done, a, uh, you know, a good job in this cycle. That's what they're trying to do and not repeat, you know, the uh, sort of the early pause that they, they did, for example, in 1970s. So uh, those would be some of the, you know, uh, time periods to, to look out for, you know, whether it's 70s, 40s, you know, where 
uh, I would say more forties, where you know the debt uh, was very elevated for US, and it took quite some time for them to uh, you know bring down inflation, uh, and the yields continue to move higher, which did lead to you know a, a round of uh, recession, and hence you know of course markets underperformed. So. Uh, we are in for a longer period, I would say, in terms of the macro risks, uh, you know, uh, sort of going away. Uh, and hence, uh, we do, uh, you know, recommend more of a cautious, uh, broadly being more cautious across markets, because, you know, a lot of what Fed does uh, will have a larger implication for most of the Asian markets, including India. Okay, so need to be a bit cautious, but Rupal, I was reading your India Quant strategy note as well and in your list of high quality and neutral momentum stock lists, while I do see a lot of consumption and technology names, there is no mention of the entire financial sector. Um, what's your understanding of where that is headed? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the way that we define quality that always, uh, you know, uh, makes it a ex financial portfolio because, you know, we look at more balance sheet quality, we look at more, uh, you know, operating quality from the metric of uh, ROICs. Uh, and hence, you know, it, you will not find uh, financials in that classic quality portfolio. But from a financial standpoint, we are still positive on, I would say, more, uh, you know, value financials plus the ones that are getting. Uh, you know, more or giving more quality and are not, uh, you know, seeing uh, a lot of volatility. So we'll stick again to the more defensive pockets within financials, uh, which are not, uh, you know, too expensive, which will give you, you know, reasonably, reasonable number of, uh, you know, these bigger banks. And uh, talking a bit more about India, uh, what you mentioned in your report is that this decoupling that we have seen since start of the year and India outperformance is not likely to continue and you're expecting a slew of downgrades really to follow. Could you talk to us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think uh, the, the bigger risk that we see for India, you know, or the way that the cycle has played out in India, I would say it's been much more aligned with US. Uh, typically, India has, you know, very strong uh, domestic story, which generally tends to play out. It, it usually has like a correlation of around 23% with US markets. If you look at how the Indian markets right now are moving, it's almost at 40% correlation, correlation, which makes it, you know, more of a global story. And given, you know, everything that we just discussed in terms of, uh, you know, Fed's, um, uh, you know, uncertainty and, you know, what they'll uh, probably do uh, to bring down inflation brings in that uh, entire element of a global risk still pers persisting. But even if we ignore that, uh, you know, within India, I think some of the risks that maintain that that still persist are, I think, valuations at these level to us look unsustainable. And a lot of that uh, is because we do expect more earnings downgrades. We expect more margin risk, which is not completely being priced in yet. Uh, given typically how we've seen historically, you know, previous recessions play out. Uh, so if you look at at an aggregate level, yes, we've started seeing, uh, you know, a significant rate of, uh, you know, earnings downgrades uh, on an aggregate level for India. But again, we are nowhere close to the previous cycle lows. Uh, so there is further room for, uh, you know, earnings pressure to continue. Um, and similarly, from a margin perspective, we've not really seen the kind of margin squeeze that we typically see in a recession. Of course, certain sectors, you know, I would say more cyclical sectors tend to get more impacted both from an earnings and uh, margin, uh, you know, standpoint when it comes to a recession. Uh, and hence, you know, those would be the key sectors to watch out for where we do think that would be more pressures uh, which have not yet been priced. Thank you for taking time out and joining in, sharing with us your outlook on the economy, the implications of the movement in the US dollar for India as well as the rest of the globe.